So we're still considering families of uh, Poncelet triangles inscribed in a circle. Here I'm just showing chapel sporism, ABCs inscribed in this outer circle, and circumscribes a, an inner uh, circular caustic, right? So I have this uh, ABC family of Poncelet triangles. I'm showing here the locus of X2. Right here is this little circular locus. So over the family, X2 follows a circle, right? So this is a known result. Widely documented, I think uh, Boris Odenau uh, treats it in a 2010, uh, 2010 uh, paper of his. Uh, so here's my variant. Previously, I was actually rotating this caustic rigidly about O. So I was rotating the whole uh, circular caustic rigidly about O. Here I want to do another elementary uh, motion. I'm actually going to move the center of the caustic along this uh, horizontal line, okay, as you see here between O and some extreme point. I'm just picking, you know, the horizontal line so that I can illustrate the phenomenon. And what I'm looking at is at the projective image of ABC, which is over here, okay, A prime, B prime, C prime, under some chosen and fixed projectivity matrix, three by three, I can set the parameters here. Okay, so I got eight parameters. Uh, and then A prime, B prime, C prime is the image of ABC. Now, what I noticed was that under this well, let me say one more thing. As the in-center of ABC is, is moved around, okay, along this line, I'm adjusting its, uh, the radius of the circle so that the porism is maintained. So this is a really, well, it's a well-known formula. It's sometimes called Euler's formula, although it was first uh, exhibited by or derived by uh, William Chappell, I believe in the mid-1700s. Uh, so you can see here that to maintain the porism, the radius of that circular caustic in, in my chapel porism has to be adjusted. And you can see here that the locus of X2 remains a circle, but its radius uh, is variable. Okay, now um, my question here is, are there invariants of, on the low side of X2 uh, uh, traced by the projective image of ABC? So A prime, B prime, C prime has a, a body center, x2 and as i uh sweep not so the, so the locus is is uh, swept right over the poncelet family but my question is what happens to the family of such loci as i sweep i along a straight line so this would be kind of like the complementary elementary motion of the caustic complementary to the other one which was just a simple rotation rigid rotation about i and we saw all kinds of um invariants there so as it turns out you get invariants here too I'm showing here on the left uh, the product of the axes of, of this locus, the ratio of the axes, and the orientation of these axes. So as I animate this, you can see here that the ratio of the axes is maintained under a full uh, projectivity. Uh, the ratio of the axis of X2 is maintained, as is the orientation of that locus. Okay, what happens when this projectivity collapses to a simple affinity? Like so, let's, let's uh, make this affinity be a bit more palatable so it's sort of that triangle has more flesh to it like so so what happens if it's a simple affinity i got the same conservation so it looks like x2 is conserving uh, orientation and uh, eccentricity regardless on whether the the projectivity m is an affinity or a uh, full-on projectivity okay you can see here on the left that a over b and theta are being preserved Theta is the orientation of either one of these axes. How about uh, loci of the circumcenter X3? Uh, let's make this guy be more palatable, perhaps by, let's see here, reducing the amount of... So you can see here that X3 for the original family, ABC, is just uh, by definition pinned to the center because all these Poncelet triangles have a common uh, circumcircle, right? But you can see here the X3 of the projected image. And let me try to make that guy be more visible here. Yeah, maybe this is a good one. Let's see here. Something like that. Yeah, it's visible there. You cannot see the whole of A prime, P prime, uh, B prime, C prime. But you can see the locus over here, right? So as I move the in-center of my Poncelet system, I execute this elementary motion of the in-center of the caustic. What is happening to X3? If you look at these numbers here on the left, all of them are varying. If it's a full-on... Projectivity. What happens if it's just an affinity? Then you get no conservations either. So X3 is not being our friend here. Okay. Okay. Now how about X4? 
uh, I am in the affinity case. You can see X4 here is this big ellipse. And if you look on the left, it's conserving like X2, the eccentricity and the orientation on an, um, uh, an affinity. And then if I activate the full on um, projectivity, it continues to conserve both. You can see here that theta is jumping 180 degrees. This is just a numeric issue, but it's conserving both ratio and orientation. Okay, so that's it. Um, this is uh, a study of another elementary motion of the caustic, for example, in the bicentric case, my caustic is actually just being adjusted by its horizontal uh, center along the segment here. And I'm then watching what's happening to the loci of X3, uh, sorry, X2, X3 and X4 of the projected A, B, A prime, B prime, C prime triangles. So that's pretty much it. See you in the next video.